What's up fellas, here is Shyback and I am your suspension teacher today. I decided to make this episode so that everyone, literally everyone, you two there can understand exactly how the suspension works on your bike. Both front and rear suspension. I'm gonna show you the front suspension fork, but you don't have to know exactly what kind of technologies are used for rock shocks and forks, different brands, both uh, dampers in the rear and um, forks in the front. But you will understand the principle and that's a game changer. You will be able now to adjust the fork beautifully to your needs. And I'm just gonna use a simple syringe and a, the empty bottle in order to show you that and explain how it works. So uh, just um, important message at the beginning. We are talking here about the air spring system. So those cheapest uh, suspension forks will still have the coil inside. The principles be, will be quite, quite the same, uh, but some of the features uh, can differ. So we are talking here about the air spring. Okay, for the beginners, uh, what parts of the fork we have? This is the steerer. This goes through the, the head tube of the frame. Here we mount the stem and then the handlebars. This is the crown. These are the stanchions or the upper legs. On the, and these are the lowers. Sorry for that strong sunlight. And finally, we have the axle for the front wheel. And also here we would mount the um, uh, disc brake caliper. So this is the suspension fork. Now, how it uh, works, why do we need it? We want this fork to react to the bumps from the bottom, right? So uh, when it reacts to the bump, uh, it will soak up some of this force uh, instead of uh, simply allowing that, that force, that heat to go through the, um, through the fork to our hands, to our body, to our head, because it is painful. Uh, it makes us uh, getting tired quicker, but the most dangerous factor is that we lose the traction so that the fork, that's why the fork is so important here. Now, how does the fork uh, this job? The syringe. This left leg, on this bike at least, has here on the, on the top just a simple shredder valve. Same exact valve as you would have on your uh, inner tube if you use the shredder valve. By using this valve, we are simply pumping with the pump, with a special high pressure pump, um, the air into this chamber, into this leg. So inside this leg, there is an air chamber and this is pretty much how it looks like. Just imagine, this is the upper leg, this is the lower leg, okay? So we put there some, uh, some uh, air and now it's closed. And now when we hit the bump, that's the air that absorbs that force, that hit, that impact. Okay, so here we have the air chamber, but then we, we are getting one little problem. When the air is being compressed, it accumulates that energy so, so that it will want to just blow off back again. And that means troubles because then we lose the traction. Probably many of you have seen some old cars with the leaking suspension with no oil anymore inside and the wheels of those cars are just bouncing with almost no traction because of a lot of unsprung weight. You can see that on the car. It's not that visible on the bike, but you will feel less traction with no, with no what, with no rebound. Okay, so now just imagine that this bottle is that, um, that uh, air chamber here on the left, okay? When the fork compresses, there is more pressure here in, in the bottle, in this air chamber, and it wants to blow off. In order to stop it uh, from blowing off, we have very clever system here at the bottom of, the, of this um, uh, right leg here. It is also adjustable and it's called rebound. And just imagine, this is just for the simplicity of this video. Imagine such a chamber with the oil inside and when this part is just recovering, so let's say just blowing off, 
here on this side we have some resistance because of the oil that's going through this system of different holes right so it just resists the force of the um, air pressure on the left side right uh, causing some friction and that energy just just let's say disappears right so we don't want our fork to come back again too quickly to its uh, neutral position that's why here on the left side we'll have rebound the system the oil system that resists uh, the force that is accumulated in the air spring and this is quite cool right this is quite cool so now we have a safe system but sorry but perhaps uh, you would say hmm here on this chamber on this side I would like this one not to uh, bounce so much when I'm pushing the pedals or when I'm uh, when I want to ride uh, off the pedals of the saddle of the pedals of the saddle uh, for a while and then we have the third uh, feature that is adjusted here and it's called compression and we can just say for the simplicity it's pretty much like the rebound but it resists the forces the compressing forces of the fork so when these uppers here are being compressed against the lowers and once more we are getting more air pressure uh, maybe you would not uh, want uh, this fork to uh, react so quickly then you just adjust some compression here on this side which again will have a chamber with an oil and then the oil uh, has to go the same direction as, as here the air uh, through the system of different holes let's just call it like that and it will resist that force can you understand it now here we have the air spring it absorbs the bump so we have more air pressure when we hit the bump and uh, in order not to recover too quickly, not to blow off uh, for this fork, then we have rebound here, something that will resist that force. And then for some additional adjustment, we have also some, some chamber here that will resist the compression force on this side. So, if you want your um, fork to be very plush, react to almost everything because you don't need to save energy, you are not pushing 500 watts, you're just, you know, enjoying the trails, your compression will be maybe set on, on the lowest uh, position. If you're a cross-country rider, I'm a cross-country rider, I, I was always riding this bike with the maximum uh, compression and also if we ride aggressively we don't want to use the full travel we don't want this uh, fork to just close completely bottom out and lose uh, its uh, travel then the compression uh, uh, adjustment helps a lot okay there is more to that you can also uh, you can adjust the volume uh, of the air on this side by putting some tokens inside and it will change the progressivity uh, of your fork there is no uh, compression uh, the no, no um, volume spacers here and when i was doing some jumps i would i would actually actually uh, use a whole travel uh, of my fork and the compression uh, did not help me with some extreme jumps so i would put some tokens here inside having less volume uh, of the air would allow me to uh, to have more we call it more progressive uh, fork that means that at the end of the travel we need much more force to compress the fork and it would help me not to bottom out we call it bottom, bottoming out when the fork is closing completely okay um, I hope it I hope it was quite easy you will understand now what's what's going on of course by uh, adjusting the air pressure on the left side you are also 
uh, making your uh, fork uh, more responsive to the bumps or less responsive to the bumps. Uh, but in order to do that, you really have to think about bo both the compression and the uh, air pressure uh, on the left side. How to adjust that, I'm going to also make another episode just uh, in the forest, uh, on the trails. If you have further questions, put those in the comments. And if you have some other suggestions on how to uh, explain that in the easy way, uh, the comments will be appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and Happy trails. Bye-bye.